Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, Cleveland, and all around the world, you know what time it is, it's KAZ Radio, Cleveland's online inspiration station, and today we have the spotlight on a fabulous sister, none other than First Lady <laughs> Danella Lagan. How you doing, First Lady? Praise the Lord, happy to be here, God bless you all for tuning in. It is, ex- you know, I, 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 ex- excited to have you. We were talking off air, and there are just so many excellent things for the body of Christ. But before we get into all that, my audience wants to know, and I want to know your testimony. How did Jesus come into your life? My testimony is that God saw fit for Him to uh, choose me only because. I was a young girl. I'm the youngest of six children. My mom was a single parent, and um, we were poor. You know, not poor where we had, you know, where we had to struggle so much that I had hand-me-downs and things of that nature. But there was one day I was uh, using drugs. I was um, had been molested, just going through a whole lot in my life. And then what God did is. I was in a relationship and there was a young man that ran me out of my house and pulled the gun to my head. And I had been asked to go to church. I had been asked to go to church. And this one particular day when he chased me up the street, I lived on Beachwood Avenue, never forget it. He chased me up the street and he put a gun to my head. And he pulled the trigger and the gun did not go off. And I promised God as he had the gun to my head, if you would save me, I would praise you for the rest of my days. And I promised the Lord. And on that Sunday, I went to church, bless the whole Missionary Baptist Church, Amen. and I gave my life over to the Lord, and the rest is history. Wow. That is a testimony. Yes, I thank that God. That is a testimony. And had you, and, and you were saying you, you wanted to go to church, but you, you, you hadn't gone yet, or? I had been invited. We grew up going to Cabra Hill Missionary Baptist Church on 105 and Cedar. And so I thought that in being saved, you were baptized. I hadn't had a personal relationship. My mother was on the usher board, number one and number two. And I remember us going to VBS, but I hadn't accepted Jesus Christ in the pardons of my sins. So I knew about him, but I hadn't accepted him. And so um, I, I had, had uh, there was a lady named Vaughn, and she was my hairdresser at the time, and she kept inviting me to go to church. So it was already instilled for me to go. I just hadn't accepted the invitation. Wow. And, and, this, and this incident moved you. It changed to, my life forever. Wow. That, that, that is awesome. So connect the dots for me. Okay. So from going to be saved and, and meeting Jesus at Blessed Hope under the great man, uh, Pastor Twyme in there, to becoming a first lady. How did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> now that I was looking for love in all the wrong places okay. um, and so I met my husband yes. the one that God had designed for me okay. he had come to preach at Blessed Hope and um, when we first met he was not the guy that I thought I would be married with at all because a lot of times as women we look for a man to be packaged a certain way. Right, right. But right. when he came to preach, he, you know, he had on red shoes and <laughs> all of this. So he wasn't the guy right, because right, I was right. used to thugs. Okay. And okay. so God had him packaged and he said, You're gonna be my wife. And at that moment I was like, whatever. But I had written a letter to, and put it in my Bible and said, Lord, this is the type of person that I believe that I need. Hmm. And so God had sent him and I didn't even know it. And so we dated uh, for about two years and when we got married and we hadn't had sex before we got married because yeah. I vowed to God that once he saved me and took me out of that pit I was in and gave me hope that I would honor his word and we did just that wow and y'all have not been married for uh, over 15 years 15 years yes yes yes, yes. yes. congratulations yes. thank you congratulations. thank you now you are a a great organizer, it seems to me. Every time I turn around, I'm I'm on Facebook and I and I see things like this here. Uh, you putting together these events and luncheons and, and conventions and and just every time I turn around, you got something great going on. Tell us about your ministry, Win Ministries. 
Tell when, us, how did that come about? The Lord gave me WIN about five years ago. Okay. And it stands for Women in Need. And so I was afraid five years ago, and it was not in the time. Ecclesiastes said there's a time for everything. And when the Lord gave it to me, I didn't know what it was that I was to do with it. And so I, before today, I've, I've planned. I love to plan events, organize events, and do that. But then when the Lord told me now or never, I launched this out. And so for the last three, four months, you've been seeing all of these uh, flyers go up, these posts go up. And that has been stuff that I have been impregnated with by God. And so we all have a fear of beginning something because we think that we will fail. But the Lord told me to just, if I do it in his name and do it for the right reasons, I don't have to worry about it. So we're launching when on June 4th. And so it's not going to be just another ministry, but a movement because my heart, I really want to help women in need because I was that woman on the other side that needed that help and couldn't find it. But God saw fit to save me, to to really allow me to accept him, to have an intimate relationship with him. And that's the ticket, ladies, not just knowing about him, not just hearing about him, but believing that he's everything that you read in the Bible. We have to accept and believe that he's bigger than what our minds can obtain. And that's what I'm, I'm looking to, to build, to empower, to meet needs, and help other women. Now, your, your win ministry, it sounds as though it, it's developed out of the pain that you've experienced. Overcome. And yes. overcome. Yes. Um, and we were talking off the air about the the. The, the, the faith and the fear how you've overcome the fear by applying your faith uh, give me something that you did like for instance did this, this here luncheon and fashion show that you're about to do I'm sure some fears some doubts came but what did you do what, what did you do you say you know what I'm doing it anyway what did you do to just get the ball rolling the first thing was to put it out there just to put it out to there. put it out there okay um, the fear is that I, I, I thought Lord if I put this out here people not gonna buy into it and so your mind starts to wonder and then I have a forward faith now that before I already see it before it's come to fruition and that's what we have to do we have to believe every word that God has said so the fear was is it was me I was my biggest enemy mm. it was not because someone else told me that I couldn't do it is that I wouldn't do it and so now I'm like it's now or never God told that you can either do it now or you will never allow it to happen so I know that if I don't get any endorsements if anyone don't support God is going to supply I'm not starting this ministry with a grant or with other things right. that people this is with our own money that's that's how much I believe that I'm going to help someone and anyone knows me that knows I will give you the shirt off of my back the the exterior doesn't mean anything to me as long as you're right on the inside everything else will flow on the outside so this is not just the launch of a fashion show it's just another fashion show I have over 20 women very powerful women of God that I want to come together the city is so big yet so small we yes, want we yes. don't support one another we don't encourage one another we don't want to to uh, endorse somebody else thinking that oh that's gonna take something for me it's all it's, it's enough for everybody but if we support one another get each other in the room and this is exactly what I told the ladies not saying that we're all going to be friends that you're going to uh, you know that's going to be my, my role dog or whatever but if you, she has to have something that you need and when we all come together it'll stick we have to stop being divided stop trying to make it all about us and be about each other we have to realize that we are women in need of something none of us have it together Right. Because if we did, we wouldn't need one another, and God wouldn't put us in the past to help one another. So that's the thing that we have to all learn to get along. Well, well you know, w- one thing that the Spirit has, has hit me with, uh, real strong about you and, 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 and the Win Ministries, is that it's, it's breaking a denominational divide. Um, oh, the, the, yeah. the women you're bringing together, are, it doesn't yes. ma- to you, it doesn't matter what denomination they belong it all only thing that matter is that they can help one another and help others. That's it. We'll miss out on our blessing trying to find out if somebody's Baptist. Come on. If you're Jehovah, we'll miss Come out on. on it. Yes. God yes. calls people. 
Yes. And so what we have to realize is that it's not about denominations. It's about helping another sister getting where they want to be. We all have dreams, aspirations, and goals. God has gifted all of us. So now why not help each other? develop that gift why not help each other to bring together and if you can give a sister uh something and i can give her something to make her whole it's not about that anymore we have to stop thinking if they ain't baptist or whatever and this person may have more of god in them than you have in yourself wow it's the bible says that many are called but few are chosen and so i'm looking for the chosen one I, I'm looking for those that are going to be real about ministry. And I tell people this, if you're not real, then I don't, I don't need to have you around me because life is too short. And I've wasted all, I, I, I'm 45 now, and I don't have another 45 minutes to waste. I'm <laughs> 45 looking, minutes. <laughs> I know that's right. right. I'm looking amen, to help. Amen, amen. And so we have to realize that we, we, we have something that we can help somebody else with. Amen. And so we have to stop looking at people a certain way because they look a certain way or they belong to a different ministry. It's all about us coming together. Sisterhood is powerful. Yes, it is. Well, you know, I, I mean, I've seen where women are more, more equipped or ready to help and support one another's ministries than unfortunately uh, the brothers. You know, it, it, it seems that you guys can come together. I know some fabulous women that are, that are part of your your WIN ministry that's coming up together. I know my wife is uh, is excited about it. I know Pastor Chelsea and, and then I know Pastor Coles, who's a dear friend of mine, uh, are just speaking highly of, of what's going on here. So and, and they're all different churches and different denominations and the, and the whole bit. So you're, you're getting what God gave you to, to, to vision. And the, cr the craziest thing is that my prayer has been for the Lord to enlarge my territory with mm. the right one. I've been hurt yes. um, a lot. And so I had a guard up. So people may say, well, where'd she come from? You know, where, where she's been? I've been there, but I had to get over the hurt that I had uh, had brought to me from an, from other females, and so I had to make sure I was whole, and so that I can. The, uh, Pastor Cole, Pastor Pernell, Lady Chappelle, these ladies to me are giants in the ministry, yes. and for them to even want to come and allow me, Pastor Bay, to church to take me and allow me to be in their company is of all to me because I'm nobody and I'm not saying that I put them up there yes. but they see something no, in me sister. at one time that <laughs> I didn't see them in myself right, right. so it's the Lord is no shorter than his word everything that I prayed about is coming to pass because I want us to see that we need each other it, it, it's not about people look and say oh she dressed good I'm more than a dress yeah. you know or she looked good I'm more than how I look I have something that I want to bring to the table and I want these move these ladies in this movement to come together and let's help the, it's plenty of women out there on crack cocaine yes. I was one of them yes. and so I never went to AA because I believe in NA and I'm not knocking nobody that, that did but what I'm saying is when I told the Lord that if he could take the taste out of my mouth and he did, and I haven't been back, I know wow. that God is powerful. So there's women out there that don't believe that they can do it, and those are the women that I want. The ones that have been molested, that's still holding on to their past, those are the ones that I want to help. To the women that have been abused because of the past that they've been dealt, those are the women I want to help, and I want the women that want those same things. Let's come together. It don't have to be my program. I just want it to, if they have it, I'm, I'm going to come along and I'm going to do what I can do to help it yes. because we have to know we're in this together. And we ain't talking about uh, church floppers yes, and bringing people yes, in. Yes. We're talking about going to help people in the street to realize that they haven't even, don't know that there's hope. Yes. You know, the, the, the greatest thing that, 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 that I read, John 3, 16, yes, God. for God so loved the world. He didn't say, for God so loved the Muslims or the Buddhists or the Baptists or the Christians. or the He loved the world. And I think if we adapt that type of philosophy that we love the world, win will win. Oh, win's going to win. Win Let is me tell winning. you, because Come the on. thing of it is, I tell people I win with my eyes wide <laughs> shut. Let Come me on. tell you. I'm to, God has given us all a gift. Yes. Some of us may not be able to go out in the street and witness to someone, but you can do something on the back end. Wynn wants to uh, meet needs of women. 
and I'm talking about we're going to be having things where we're clothing and I'm not talking about clothes that people don't want I want to give them good clothes good shoes and I want to um, th for some organizations that need someone out there to partner with, Wynn is looking for you because I want to be able to pour into, uh, if you have a vision that you started or a program that's going to help battered women, abused women, uh, children, anything like that, we, I'm the person that you need to contact because we want to get out there. And there's one thing that for anyone that's listening, Romans 8 and 28 is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, for we know all things work together for the good of them yes. that love God and the call according to his purpose. It may not feel good while it's working, but it will work out for your good. So no matter if you've been molested, you've been on drugs, you've been in wrong relationships, God is just using that for a, a test to become a testimony. That's why I'm not afraid to share where I've been. Now, now question for you Th this event that that's coming up on june 4th this is a precursor to something else is that correct yes this okay. is a precursor for the conference there's going to be a who's that lady conference on august the 20th it will be held at second ebenezer missionary baptist church and so this conference will is for uh the young um, as well as the old, we have a variety of classes, some powerful speakers. Lady Van from the Detroit will be uh, teaching the pastor's wives. And the one thing that I want every pastor's wife to be a part of this class, because a lot of times we don't have other people that we can sit and share with. Okay. We can't share things with our congregations. We can't share things, uh, you know, sometimes with our husband. But the, this is going to be a platform for a room full of pastor's wives, not to let you air out your dirty laundry, but a woman in need of help. It's waiting to excel. Something that you have that or you've gone through is going to help another pastor's wife. There's classes for singles. There's pa uh, classes for single parents. There's classes for seniors. Uh, there's general classes, and so this is just a springboard off of that. But we're going to, at the fashion show on June 4th, we're going to be um, giving out some things for women, battered women, and yes, doing things of yes. that n magnitude. Whenever Wynn does something, is doing something to help something or somebody. You know, that, that was my next question. Um, you know, with, with the different homeless shelters and the, the different women, uh, places that that have battered women, are you? And I'm assuming you're inviting them yes. to, to come to this event yes. to receive the word of encouragement and as well uh, different clothing and and other things like nature and lunch and, and all that. Um, they're going to be coming out. And the one thing I don't, Wynn does not just want to put um, a stamp on just any old shelter. Okay. We want to. Uh, be a part of shelters that when we donate the clothes that they get them right when not we, resell them someplace or, or find the employees with them on wow. just saying truth not trying to you right. know I don't know if you work at a shelter or whatever but I'm saying I know some that do we've partnered with some uh, small organizations that make sure that the people will get the clothes we make sure that the people will get the uh, different items that we're going to be giving out. Though we, we've partnered with that, and so those are the things that, you know, Wynn wants to do is to make a difference, meet needs where they need to. You know, a lot of times we're selfish, and we don't want to give something away, and we have to learn that it's better to give than to receive. receive. Amen. Yes. You know, you know I'm, I'm, I'm sure our, our listeners uh, are just loving your, your heart and, and, and your passion for, for others and helping others. Uh, tell us a little bit about your church. Uh, New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church, uh, uh, 1375 Addison Road, where the Honorable A. Charles Lagan is pastor. Woo woo! <laughs> it's um, love the church, uh, love the people, and what you see is what you get. Uh, I'm a first, I'm not like a lot of first ladies. Uh, I put a hat on when I want to, I don't play the organ or the piano. Okay. And um, I sing, but it may not be something that people want to hear. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but you're making a joyful noise <laughs> yes. to the Lord. Amen. Yes. <laughs> yes. So it's a, a church that we believe is a teaching church. Yes. And a preaching church. Yes. And so we don't just want to be known as singing or eating. We want to be known as the word. Wow. 
Wow. Amen. 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 So, so folks can come out on, on what days to your church services? Uh, visit? Wednesday is Bible study, 630, and Sundays at 10 a.m. We're out of church between 12 and 1230. Uh, we ask that you come out. Um, be a part of it. We're going to be having our community day soon. And our community day, what we do, we uh, ask for donations of clothing, um, book bags, all of that things we're asking. So we ask the, the community, we give out flyers, we walk the community, and uh, Mother Torrance, uh, who is a pillar at New Jerusalem, she uh, leads this. And so we go and we ask the community to come. We barbecue, give out uh, food, and we ask them to go through and they pick whatever they want and wow. they can take it home because we believe that if the community don't know that the church is in the area, it's a church that is yet to be seen. Amen. If the community don't care about your church or know that you're trying to help them, then they can uh, close it and no one would even care. Right. So when you take care of the community, the community will take care of you. Amen. So I believe that on, on June 4th, I think KZ, is this where we're going to be? KZ is going to also be a part Yes, yes, you're going to be there. Yes, we're going to be there along with BoxCast to, to, to be a vendor there as well. And I heard you're, you're all out of vendor booth. Is that, yes, is that correct? Yes, we're all out. That's pretty good. Yes, we were out, and I'm so excited about yeah. it. Yes, we're all out. All out. Yes. Sorry, sorry, vendors that, that want to come <laughs> out, but you can buy a ticket and, and, yes. and, and come and enjoy the, 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 the launch of uh, Wins Ministry Presents. Who's that lady um, at the Hilton Garden Inn in Cleveland downtown? And uh, that's going to be exciting. And there's something going on today, too. What's happening today? I know you want to give a shout out oh, to, yes. to your girl. Lady Chappelle, Tammy Chappelle. Woo woo. <laughs> I just want to uh, thank her because she uh, just, you know, inboxed the next that I want to be a part of uh, the women of our house, which I believe is great. Any woman that um, is just looking to be with a group of ladies that will push you to do you to push you to be the best and all you can be and I thank God for Lady Chappelle because not only is she uh, the person that has launched this uh, ministry but she is a fabulous woman, woman of God that will pour into you like none other so um, she she loves Excellency, and so you could tell by the flyers and stuff that yes, I do, mama. I love it. So she she's prompt on time. She say what, what she mean and she mean what, what she, she say. say. But the most of all, she love women, and she loves to empower women. So she's going to be launching where if you haven't been able to get in on this time, the twenty first at midnight. You can register for the next Women of Our House. Uh, I am an original. Thank you, Jesus. But you can go ahead and and. Uh, inbox Lady Chappelle and ask her. It's a great movement of over 20 women. And tonight will be the magazine release party. And so excited. And I think Exciting. we're sold out. Wow. <laughs> sold I, out. I know my wife Kathy's going yes, through it. Yes, sold out. And, and so I, I know she's excited about it. Yes. So, I, so I have to go, I have to fend for myself tonight and find <laughs> dinner. But that's okay because it sounds like it's a worthy <laughs> <laughs> it's so worthy. It's gonna cause. be so nice. I, I, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. Well, you know, uh, Lady Lagan, uh, it has been a pleasure having you here on KZ Radio. Um, but, but before we go, uh, I'd like you to to just minister uh, to that 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 young person who God has given a a vision to, uh, a ministry to, but just doesn't know what to do next. Let me say this, and I say this with sincerity. I have uh, nine children, seven girls and two boys. Um, and so for so long that I had put all that I had into them. And so the one thing during raising, me and my husband raising those nine children, the one thing that I cultivated is a real intimate relationship with God. And so the one thing I would like to tell you, if you have lost your faith or lost your way, that you must desire and develop an intimate relationship with God. God, nothing happened to you or me by accident. God had it in his divine plan. But if the Lord takes you to it, he'll bring you through it. And so what you have to believe in yourself first, if you don't believe in God and then yourself, then everything that you do is going to be for naught because you don't even believe that you can make it. But I come to tell you that if he did it for me, crack cocaine, 
molestation, all the things, drug use, everything that I've been through. And I said, how could God call me? Because he loved me first, before I was even in my mother's womb. And so what you have to believe that you are not a victim, but you are victorious. You are not defeated. You are an overcomer. God loves you. And you have to believe that. We look for love in all the wrong places. And we know in our heart what God has purposed in our hearts and in our minds to do. But we first have to put him first. And we have to study to show ourselves approved. A workman that need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. When you know truth, then you know that anything that you set out in God won't fail. And so you have to love God, love you, and love what God has impregnated you to do. It hurts to push anything out. But then after you push it out, you look at it and you say, what a blessing. And so if you want to be a blessing, not only to God, to yourself, but to the body of Christ, ask God. Don't go on what no one else says. Don't go on what someone told you that you should be doing. Seek God's face and not his hands. It's not just about what he can do for us, but what we can do for him. So I'm asking that you please don't think of yourself that you're a loser, that you can't do it. If I can do it, I know anybody can. And so I just want you to know that you can make it with Christ. God bless you. I, inbox me. You guys can call me, whatever. I'm looking to help those in need. And if you're one, I'm here to help you. Amen. Well, we want to thank you again for just being a part of the KZ Radio family. Thank you so much. And we'll just close out with this. I love you. Jesus loves you. And there's nothing you can do about it. God bless.